Mom, if you had it to do over again, what would you do different? Well, I think I would spend more time alone with God, uh, pray more, but uh, get closer to Him, and worry less, I guess. Because I, I really don't feel like it's taken me years to understand the power of prayer. Um, but the Bible says that we have a high priest, that Jesus is a high priest. And he, he feels what we feel and he understands us. And he was tempted like we are, but without sin. And so he understands us. And then the Bible says, so therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, boldly to the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Well, what an invitation. I can't say I understood that invitation. It was too wonderful to think of being able to come into the throne room of heaven, to meet with the Lord God Almighty. It's just too amazing. And I think we have a, a spiritual inferiority, thinking, well, who am I? What, what, what does difference does my prayer make? Now, I can see Billy Graham or or great Christian leaders praying and God listening. But to think that he listens to everybody and he knows all about us and he longs for us to come to him. He longs to have fellowship with us. And the closer we get to him, the more peaceful life is, the more we know about him. But I think if we understood what really happens when we pray, when, when we pray, God is listening. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of think I wasn't sure that he was listening. It made me feel better, but I don't know if he was listening. But I found out that God is listening. And our words are so important to him. And he pays attention to what we say, what we need. But... We have this inferiority, well, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But you know, I was thinking that someday when we get to heaven, uh, somebody's gonna come up to me and say, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And I thank you for praying for me. And I'll say, I don't, I don't remember praying for you. Excuse me, I don't know, when was this? And they'll say, well, you don't remember, you don't know me, but you were driving down I-26 and I was walking homeless and baffled and bewildered, so sick of everything. And when you passed me, you prayed for me. I heard you pray for me. And things happened in an amazing way and I, I received the Lord and I'm saved. And now I'm in heaven. Thank you for praying for me. Who knows? Who knows what happens if, if we really care about people? Everybody needs prayer. And there, there are some people that never have anybody pray for them in the whole world. There's a book called Touch the World Through Prayer. Do you know that you can pray for people in Africa and China and Russia and Iran? What would happen if we really believed that prayer is powerful? I, I have an illustration that I might fit in here. But years ago, um, I was working with this lady, and she was a sweet lady, but she uh, gave this testimony about the power of prayer. She said that she had a son who she prayed for him. He was a wayward boy and just so disobedient. And uh, she prayed for him and prayed for him, but nothing happened. And finally, he joined the Navy and was gone for two years, disappeared for two years. And she kept praying for him. And one night, she was sound asleep. And all of a sudden, she was awakened by this terrible terror, feeling that something was happening to her boy. And she got down on her knees beside the bed, and she prayed for him, prayed for him, Lord, help him, whatever is going on, just help and protect him. And then the feeling passed. She climbed back in bed. And that was strange. In the morning when she woke up, she thought, what a strange experience. I wonder 
what was going on. Why did God awaken me? Well, a few days later, her boy appeared at the door. And the first thing he said was, Mom, I'm saved. I'm born again. And she said, Oh, tell me what happened. Hold the, tell me how it happened. And he said, A couple nights ago, I was washed overboard. And I was in the water, and I, I knew I was drowning. And I, I tried to pray, and I could I didn't know how to pray. I couldn't pray. I couldn't pray. And he said, Then I heard you singing. You were singing. There is life for a look at the crucified one. And mom, I looked to Jesus and he saved me. Then I went under, but they pulled me out. Now, if that boy would have drowned, that mother never would have known that he was saved. But because of her bold witness and her godliness and her prayer, it affected him at that moment that he was drowning. And I think that if we really believed that prayer is that powerful and we would believe, just believe the word, just believe what the word says, the word says that. I guess we have trouble just believing that it's true. We exaggerate and I, <laughs> for years I thought that God exaggerated too, but he doesn't. Wonder what would happen in your family, if you understood that there's power in your prayer, power, power in your prayer, mm -hmm. don't give up. If you've been praying for somebody for a long time, don't give up, because God will answer that prayer, and you have power with God if you love Him. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available. Mm. So you have to be right with God. Yeah. Don't come to him with dirty hands and expect him to hey, listen to you. Cleansed heart, just a cleansed heart. I want to be clean and pure, Lord, in your sight. I've got all this to talk to you about, Lord. I've got so many burdens. I'm not going to worry about them. I'm going to run to you, Daddy. I'm going to run to Jesus. I want to tell you all my burdens. And I believe you're listening and you're loving me. Don't forget, he really loves you. Mm -hmm. Really, really loves you. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. 